Okay, so hello everybody. I'm gonna be your last speaker today in this room uh, about trust-based adaptive access control architecture. My name is David Hallis, and I work as a principal software engineer. Uh, seriously, guys? <laughs> So I work as a principal software engineer for Red Hat. Uh, I'm in my ninth year there. I also uh, am a PhD student and researchers, researcher at the Masaryk University in Brno, Czech Republic, uh, in the lab of software architectures and uh, information systems. And I'm also an alumni of this school. You've probably seen those ducks outside on the corridor. This one uh, with the David text on it in the 2016 year is mine. My PhD research, which, come on, Jim. Yes, but it's not for you. <laughs> it's for the recording. So uh, my research at the university is about trust-based adaptive safety in autonomous ecosystems, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit more. So uh, what are software ecosystems? So if we combine multiple systems into uh, one big unit, and we can call them a systems of, or, of systems or ecosystems, it's some kind of evolution as we are creating more complex and more complex structures. And of course, such systems can uh, provide much more, much more than a single system. Ecosystems can provide more than a system. So if you, look, if you think about an analogy from uh, buildings, so an architecture of a regular house could be a software system. Then the architecture of an ecosystem could be like a city with all these plans of every individual buildings inside. So this is what I'm, I'm researching. Like this is the uh, main focus. Uh, of course, if we bring autonomy to the topic, so we don't talk about software ecosystems, but autonomous ecosystems or autonomous software or cyber physical ecosystems, we can get much more higher degree of autonomy as we have multiple actors in the world uh, working together, collaborating or competing. Uh, member systems can join or leave at any time, so uh, context changes are producing a lot of unpredictable situations and a lot of uncertainty which uh, brings to the main topic of my research is the safe and secure behavior of such systems. Uh, we're gonna look into something that's really uh, a really small focus field of this uh, research, ecosystem coordination. By coordination, I mean, for example, if you have a set of cars in a multi-lane highway, you can coordinate them to move them in a single lane uh, reducing aerodynamic uh, resistance, basically vehicle platooning. This can be called as an autonomous ecosystem of self-driving cars moving in one, one lane. So uh, we can do ecosystems coordination in two uh, different ways. One is sending messages, so we can ask these autonomous vehicles to talk to each other and have some implicitly implemented features that can react to these uh, messages that they send. This is relatively safe because you have some pre-trained stuff that you already know it in advance, but uh, it doesn't really give you flexibility of uncertain situations. Which we are looking into more is sharing software. So sending some kind of code, something, something executable uh, between autonomous systems, uh, which receivers can execute. Uh, obviously, it's not that safe as uh, sending messages because you can execute stuff. Uh, but it brings you the, uh, the opportunity to have new features on the fly. For example, if you have these vehicles here, it's enough if one has the smart agent or the software module for platooning. It can share this software module with the other vehicles, which don't even support this feature. And uh, after everything's working fine, they can move into one platoon, even though they didn't have this uh, supported feature before. Of course, uh, running a third party software module on your autonomous vehicle in privileged mode is, is kind of a bad idea. I guess everybody can agree here that <laughs> we shouldn't do that. But uh, <laughs> if it's a bad idea, it can be still fun. So uh, our view of how to make it safe is to use the concept of trust. 
And by trust, I don't really mean the trust as you know in uh, software engineering in general with trusted computing, trusted execution, or key pairs, uh, encryption, and trust in HTTPS certificates. Uh, I mean more like uh, trust as in human psychology or in philosophy, where you have some kind of relationship between uh, a truster and a trustee, and the trustee uh, is uh, having some kind of vulnerabilities by, by trusting the truster. So we are trying to model something in this area. Uh, and somebody smarter than me said that reputation-based trust can be effective for securing communication. And our belief is that we cannot, can also use it for uh, interactions, not just any kind of interaction, even physical interaction, not just communications. So. Our idea is to use trust as a decision factor in real-time evaluation. Uh, we already know that this trust will be not binary. So I'm not sure about the representation yet, but in a single, uh, simple solution with binary, true, false, trust, not trust, uh, you can have a lot of false, uh, very, very dangerous false positive situations. So a uh, dual solution is definitely not something what we want. Uh, we are also looking into reputation, which is we interpret reputation in a way that trust uh, assessed by other actors, basically gossiping. So one, let's say, autonomous vehicle has an interaction with another one, it has a bad experience, and it shares with others. Basically the same as people gossip about other people, which is not nice, but in, in autonomous uh, ecosystems it might be useful for us. So. Uh, to calculate trust, uh, if I say number, it might be a number, so we can go with that. So we would use this external reputation on these uh, smart agents, software modules. Uh, we can use static analysis to find some kind of vulnerabilities there. The important part is, which is not my research, but I'm going to use it as an input, is predictive simulation using digital twins. And based on the result of these digital twins, we can do live compliance checking, which I will explain later. So, uh, is anybody unfamiliar here with digital twins? Okay, so uh, a digital twin in our case uh, can model anything from the physical world. Basically, it's a digital representation of a physical object. In our case, the physical object can be the software module doesn't have to be, but uh, I will explain why it was our solution. Uh, as you see it on the picture, what we do with predictive simulation is that in a simulated world, we run ahead of time and run some kind of simulations on the digital twin. And the smart agent, which is running in software, in case of software, the exact same stuff in the real world. You can compare these two things, and based on that, you can assess some kind of trustworthiness, how much the model itself is trustworthy based on the predictive simulations, and also how the two differ from each other, which is the live compliance checking I was talking about. So uh, I really don't know that the trust, how the trust would be. Uh, my best guess, and our, in our papers we talk about the percentage, but uh, more and more research is pointing towards a vector of different aspects, so maybe like five or six percentages based on some kind of uh, metrics. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that we would like to go with this uh, smart agent digital twin bundle with some digital signature because it, it, it gives us some extra safety. So uh, if we talk about digital twins, this is our generic idea that we would uh, verify the digital signature. If it fails, we don't care about the bundle. If it passes, we do static analysis. Again, if it fails, we don't care about the bundle. Then we verify the digital twin on some preset simulations. If it fails, it, we not, not just uh, reject the bundle, but we also propagate the trust score to the world, telling others that this might be some untrustworthy uh, software module or smart agent. Then we do some predictive simulations and execute it and do the live compliance check based on those results. Uh, this was a simplified thing, and I would like to show you the kind of the whole architecture, which looks like this, uh, which is kind of complex, but we'll go into this more a little bit later. Uh, what it does actually, so it does predictive simulation of uh, some scenarios uh, using the digital twin. 
So you have some real reality and you can have some multiple scenarios in the future based on that reality and you can do all the simulations with the digital twin. Compare the simulations with the results, that's the live compliance check. Based on that, we can calculate that trust score, in which case it can be a number, let's say 45%. And based on this score, we can set up a decision tree that would allow us to expose certain features to this uh, smart agent or, on the other hand, conceal those uh, features. Basically, some kind of access control based on how much we can trust this module, based on reputation and other metrics. So again, looking at this, so we have some external reputation coming from other vehicles. We have the smart agent and digital twin coming to some kind of gatekeeper. We verify that digital twin on some preset simulations. Then we load it to the simulator. Uh, we load it, the smart agent to the sandbox. And these two entities work in tandem, cal calculate some kind of uh, comparison that goes to the trust aggregator that creates a trust score. And based on the trust score, the sandbox basically has or not has access to certain features on the vehicle's uh, platform. But, which might be interesting for you, software engineers not really working with automotive and uh, let's say uh, different technologies in the cloud, if you squint on this a little bit more, what this architecture res resembles you? You have some uh, rules, you have some role, and based on the rules and the roles, you have some access. What if I say Kubernetes RBAC is something similar? And what if we could implement something trust-based in Kubernetes? So instead of RBAC, we could do something like TBAC, which would basically implement a similar arch architecture in the cloud. I mean, it would probably be totally useless uh, in, in software environments. Uh, but I see it as a viable way of doing a proof of concept. And I heard some rumors that there is a team at Red Hat who tries to run containers on vehicles. OK, somebody's shaking his head, so it might be not true. <laughs> so uh, it would be probably useless in a real cluster where you're running it in the cloud, some services, because you might not be able to run some kind of simulations. But in some edge computing cases, it might be useful. So that's our vision how and why we would like to run it in, uh, in uh, Kubernetes at some point. So uh, to wrap it up, there is some future work that we are looking into. So based on this, we are trying to swap the smart agents with sensor, uh, a pair of sensors. So we could calculate trust on sensors, and we can like trust or not trust the sensors, and based on that, uh, believe or not what the sensors say. Another uh, approach is to use digital twins of autonomous vehicles and extend this architecture for a whole ecosystem. So we could simulate other cars, calculate their trust score, and behave accordingly. So it wouldn't be just inside one vehicle, but the architecture would be extended among multiple ones. And the last one is that we just submitted a paper and it's not yet accepted, is trustworthy execution in an untrustworthy way. So let's uh, flip the concept that the smart agent wouldn't trust the execution environment where it's running. Uh, we had some initial discussions with people who understand blockchain and this might be an unsolvable problem because the vehicle manufacturer might, be some, might have some uh, godlike power on your smart agent but there are still ways how to detect that such thing can happen. So stay tuned for that. It might, might uh, have some interesting results. And uh, last but not least, I would like to mention that my supervisor will have a talk tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Or actually, I will do it because she twisted her ankle today. So if she, she uh, recovers, then check out her talk. Otherwise, see me tomorrow as well. Thank you. Yeah, I try to make it fast because dinner. And I think if you can mention the fact that uh, validation. Validation? Yeah, a couple more items. Which one? This one? Oh, this one. Yeah.
Sorry, I cannot hear you. Uh, because that would fail on other, any other vehicle. This is an architecture that has some kind of static analysis, so it doesn't really make sense because each of them would. Yeah, well, the point is that everybody would implement this framework. They would have the same kind of static analysis, so they could catch the same issue. Anyway, the question was why the uh, static analysis isn't notifying the aggregator. So the question is about the what, how the aggregator gets protected from spamming from false positives and false negatives. So the results are uh, actually not coming from the smart agent, but the simulator that runs the smart agent. So the smart agent cannot really spam it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The aggregator gets a message from an exi existing component that's also under our control. No, no, no. Yeah. Do you have any, I understand that mission, but do you have any uh, track record of picking up protons? Do you keep track of the protons? And that's where actually sharing the static analysis in the aggregator could be of interest because you may be, you may build uh, a repetition not only about the binary that is exchanged with the visual, but where that binary is originating from. And at some point, Yeah, so the question was about track record and uh, re regarding the static analysis that we might get some interesting reputation if, if from a certain uh, vendor we have uh, failing, failing static analysis. Uh, we weren't really looking into specific vendors and track records, but this is an interesting aspect. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Just please be louder because I cannot hear from the AC. So the question was about uh, GPG and trust chains, that uh, the way that it resembles what we have with GPG and trust chain. No, we were actually trying to get uh, around this topic of trust chain and uh, static kind of uh, trust. So our approach is trying to be dynamic and we, we try to avoid and throw away everything that was tr interpreted as trust in uh, software engineering and computing. Any more questions? Please.
Yeah, so the question was about vulnerabilities and attack surface, in, specifically in the thrust aggregator and the thrust gate. Uh, well, the thrust gate isn't really uh, in that shape yet that I can talk more about the details, so it's just a high-level thing. Regarding the thrust aggregator, there are already some research with some results on how to do countermeasures uh, against such attacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the thrust aggregation and the calculation isn't really my research. My focus is more on, on this part than the left. Okay, I guess thank you for your attention. <laughs>